Good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to show you a new feature of the just released Cloud Pack for Watson Alps version 3.7. We're going into details for log analytics, and today I'm here with Amy Q. She is from the Silicon Valley Labs, and she will guide you through the demo and introduce the topic. In general, we are going to have two topics today, which we're going to present. This is incremental learning and drift detection. Incremental learning is a new feature of the just released Cloud Pack, and drift detection is a tech preview. So with that, over to you, Amy. Hey everyone, my name is Amy and today I'm going to be going over three new features that we have implemented for 3.7, which are the incremental training, drift detection, and automatic data selection features. And these are all available for log anomaly training. I'm going to give a quick overview on each of these items and then also a short demo of what the user can expect to see in the UI when we're training data with these new features. The first feature that I'm going to go over is incremental training. This is a production feature for 3.7, and when it's enabled, it's going to check for new resources in the training data, and then only launch new training jobs for those newly discovered resources. Previously, before this, any training run would have to launch brand new jobs for all of the components, but with this feature enabled, it's going to help make any retraining faster because existing models from a previous training run can just be copied over and then new training jobs are launched only if there are completely new resources that don't already have any trained models. We've implemented a toggle in the training UI for log anomaly training. So this is a screenshot that I have and you can see we have this checkbox that says enable incremental training and users can click in this box during like while they're setting up configuration to decide if they want to enable or disable this feature. So I'm gonna show you a quick demo of how this feature works. I'm gonna pull up my cluster over here. And so for the sake of time, earlier this morning, I've already uploaded and trained some V1 models inside of this cluster. And this was trained with a data set that has data for three components. So we can see here in the model quality section that it has a total of three models, like um, so you can see like quote, rating, and author, and this corresponds with the three components in the data set that I've uploaded. We can also look at the activity section on the right hand side, and we'll see that it has three jobs that were launched for training. And this is to be expected because it's the first time that we were training models since it was V1 for training runs. And so all the jobs needed to be launched for all the components in the data set. And in the time that we had been going over the PowerPoint slides, I also added some more data to this cluster. So I'm gonna run pre-check and training and then explain what I did. But essentially to demo this incremental training feature, I want to add in data from a new component and then check that that training job is launched for just that one component. So that's what I had added before I hit pre-check right now. And you can see that it's running here, so we'll just give it a couple seconds. Yeah, so now pre-check has succeeded, and now I can go and click train models to train these models with the newly added data. And you can see already that it shows that the data pre-check has identified four models, which is what we're expecting, because previously we had three models from V1 training, and then I, in the time between, I've added some more data that has an additional component. So it's going to register that we have a total of four components in our data set, and there need to be four models that are trained. We can also look at this box here where it says that incremental training is enabled, and that's because I clicked in the checkbox to enable this feature during configuration. But now it says that training has completed. So if we go over to the right-hand side again for the activity section, we can see that it has one job launched in this training run, and it shows that this only took 30 seconds, which is relatively quick since there was only one training job that needed to be launched. This is the quote of the day image component, which matches the newest component of data that I had added in between. 
And if we look at the model quality section box again, then we'll see that it has the same three models as before, which were quote rating and author. And then now we also have, in addition to that, we have quote of the day image, which is the newest component. This was a quick demo of what the user can expect to see for incremental training if this feature is enabled and if there are brand new resources found in the training data. It'll run any subsequent retrainings pretty quick because there only needs to be training jobs launched for any newly discovered resources. So I'm going to go over the next feature, which is the drift detection feature. And this is going to detect cases of drift and then flag any models that experience drift so that they'll be retrained on a later scheduled run. In the back end, we currently have two detectors available for this, which is the data drift detector based on a Bayes model. And this identifies when there are significant changes between the incoming data and the training data that had been used to generate the existing trained models. This one is currently a production feature and it's going to retrain models when it's enabled along with the incremental training feature, which I had just covered a little bit ago. Our second detector is for our model drift, and this one uses River to consider confidence and number of anomalies when it's determining whether a model is still making useful predictions. If either of these detectors flag a model to have drift, then those models are going to be retrained at the next scheduled training run. And the impact of this is that it's going to help us ensure that the trained models that we have are appropriately reflecting the incoming log data. Now to demo this feature, I'm going to go to another cluster that I have set up. And again, I've already uploaded and trained some V1 models with a data set that has normal data for three components, which we can check here. It's got quote, reading, and author. and I've also uploaded some additional data in the time that we were speaking, so I'm just going to hit pre-check to get that going. But to show that the drift detectors work, I want to trigger drift by uploading some data that is significantly different from the training logs that were seen in training V1 models. As we were going over the slides, I also uploaded a data set that has a large volume of anomalous logs for one of these components. And we're going to use this to mimic drift having occurred in the data because the detector is going to recognize that these new anomalous logs are very different from the logs that we had seen in the original training data. And it's going to flag that as having like drift having occurred for this one particular component. Yeah, just now I hit the pre-check option and it says that pre-check came back with good data. So after that, I had just clicked in training again and we're probably gonna give it a minute to go. But dun dun. Yeah, we're gonna give that a minute. You can see that it says it's training. Zero of three models have been created because it's still going. And we can kind of see the progress of how it's going in the activity section. Already we can see that the start and end timestamps of pre-check and how long that took. And then for training, it says one job is being trained right now. Yeah, so training has completed at this point, and we can go and check the activity section. And it says that one job has been launched, and this job actually corresponds to the job that had the anomalous logs inside of the new data set. This shows how the drift detector works, where it's able to recognize the specific components where data has significantly changed, and then launch training jobs to update those specific models and better reflect the incoming data. That's a demo of the drift detectors. And then the last thing that I want to briefly touch on is the automatic data selection feature. When this feature is enabled, it's going to automatically filter out any anomalous data within the training data set that might cause the trained models to be skewed in any way. And this feature can still be used in conjunction with the existing manual filter that we have where users can explicitly choose the start and end timestamps to filter out of their training data. Here I have a screenshot of what this toggle will look like in the UI. The user can click in this checkbox that says auto select normal patterns, and that's going to enable this automatic data selection feature. And still down here, we, we still have the options where they can 
manually choose the start and end timestamps of the training data that they want to filter out. The impact of this feature is that it'll require less pre-analysis from the user when they're working with any particular data set because it'll be able to automatically filter out any data that's unneeded for training. So that is the end of my demo. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Amy, for the demonstration. Now, let's have a look into additional material. Of course, we have documented the whole thing, and it is here. This is the link to the latest documentation of the IBM Cloud Pack for What's Now Ops. And as we are in log anomaly detection, this is the section where to look for incremental learning and drift detection. And with that, we conclude today's demo. Thank you very much for your attention, and see you another time. Bye.